In this video, we're going to do a couple of examples related to compound interest. And so to start, I have up at the top of the screen the formula for compound interest. It is A equals P times the quantity 1 plus I to the n power. And since you've already done some review of the compound interest formula, you know that A equals a future amount, P is the principal amount that we invest or borrow, I is the interest rate per period. If we're given I explicitly, we can use it as is in the formula. However, if we are given a rate in the problem um, where um, the rate is an annual rate, we need to do a mini calculation for I, where I equals R divided by M, meaning the rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year. N is equal to the total number of compounding periods. Um, once again, if you're given the value for n, you can use it as is in the formula. However, if you're not given a value for n, you need to calculate it using the simple calculation m times t, where m is the number of compounding periods per year and t is the number of years. Now, we, we are going to explore that further in our second example so that you can see better uh, what, what I'm trying to say there and, and how exactly that works. So some things to keep in mind as you attack compounding interest form, uh, problems. Um, again, if the values for, R, uh, for I and N aren't explicitly stated, we're going to need to calculate those using those uh, two little mini calculations that we just talked about. Again, we're going to see that um, a little bit better in example two so that you can see how that works. Um, the second thing to keep in mind is that when you're working problems related to compound interest, you need to follow the order of operations to ensure that you get the correct answer. The third thing to keep in mind is you are going to see problems here with very large exponents and you can compute with exponents using your calculator. Now every calculator is a little bit different so if you're not sure how to use your calculator to calculate with exponents you can either consult the user manual that you got with the calculator or if you email your instructor with the calculator brand and model um, your instructor should be able to guide you regarding the keystrokes that you need to follow to calculate with those, ex with those big exponents. Finally, the last thing to keep in mind is that we will not round until the very end, which is a, um, a good kind of rule of thumb to follow when you're working finance problems. And the reason that we do that is to ensure that we get the most accurate final answer possible. Okay, let's do our first example. The first example reads, use the compound interest formula to find the future value A given that P equals $500, I equals .054, and N equals 28. So the first thing that we need to do is to determine the formula that we need to use to complete this problem. It's very convenient in this problem that we are told to use the compound interest formula. So um, determining the formula to use isn't very difficult in this case. And so I'm going to go ahead and write the compound interest formula on my paper. So A equals P times the quantity 1 plus I to the N power. In this case, we want to find the value of A given these other three pieces of information. Notice that the values for I and N are stated very explicitly, so we can use those numbers in our formula as is. So instead of, uh, so I'll start here by writing A equals, since A is the value that we're trying to find, I'm going to leave that as A in the formula. P equals 500, so I'll substitute 500 for P. In parentheses, I have 1 plus I, where I is given to be 0 0.054 and n equals 28, so my exponent is 28. From here, I'm going to simplify the right side in order to determine the value for a, and when I do that, I'm going to follow the order of operations. According to the order of operations, the first thing that we should do is simplify that guy in parentheses. So I like to work these problems one step at a time. It just helps me ensure that I don't make a silly mistake. So I'm going to rewrite everything else 
and just simplify 1 plus 0 0.054 in parentheses, which equals 1.054. And I'm going to rewrite my 28th, 28th power. The next thing that the order of operations tells us to do is to simplify the exponent. So I'm going to use my calculator to compute 1.054 to the 28th power. When I put that in my calculator, I get a very long decimal, and I'm going to write it out here um, because, like I said, we're not going to do any rounding until the very end. So when I put 1.054 to the 28th power in my calculator, I get 4.360, 5.0, 4.360, 5.0, 4.360, 4.360. The final step in finding the future value, A, is to multiply 500 times that very large decimal. And when I type that into my calculator, I get 2,180.25. And I'm going to go ahead and round that to the nearest cent since this amount equals a dollar amount. So my final answer, the future value of this um, for this problem is $2,180.25. Okay, let's do our second example. Our second example reads, when their baby is born, Joe and Paula deposit $7,000 into a college education account. How much will the account be worth in 19 years if it earns 7% compounded quarterly? Let's go ahead and note all of the information that we're being given in this problem. First of all, we're trying to determine the future value. So A is the amount that we don't know. That's what we're going to try to find. The initial amount P that's invested is $7,000. The time that the money is invested for is 19 years. The annual rate that we're given is 7%. We know that when we utilize a rate in a finance problem that we need to write that in terms of a decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and change that into a decimal. 7% as a decimal can be found by moving that decimal point two places to the left. I'm going to need to add a zero for a placeholder here. So 7% as a decimal is 0.07. The other piece of the puzzle that we're told is that this situation is a compound interest situation and the interest is compounded quarterly. When we compound quarterly, that implies that we compound four times per year. Now that we have all of the information that we need, we first need to determine what formula that we need to use in order to solve this problem. Since we are told that the interest um, in this case is compounded quarterly, you might think that we need to use the compound interest formula and you would be right. So we're going to need to use the compound interest formula. I'm gonna go ahead and write that on my paper. 1 plus i to the n power. Notice in this case that when it comes to the values for i and n, we are not given values for i and n. What we are given is the time in years, which is 19. We're given an annual rate of 7%, and we're being told that the this is a compound quarterly situation. So we're going to need to apply those mini calculations to determine the values for i and n. So let's go ahead and do that here first before we start plugging things in. So i is the interest rate per period. If the annual rate is 7% or 0 0.07, that means that the interest rate per period can be found by 
dividing 0 0.07 by 4, which is the number of times that the compounding happens per year. Um, when we divide 0 0.07 by 4, we get a value of 0 0.0175. So that's the value for i. When it comes to the value for n, which is the total number of compounding periods, we can find that value by multiplying the number of years, which is 19, by the total number of times that the compounding happens per year. In this case, that's 4. So 19 times 4 gives us a value of 76 for n. I'm going to move my screen down here a little bit to give us some more room. A little bit too far. OK, now we are ready to substitute all of these values into the compound interest formula. So once again, our task is to solve for the future value A. So I'm going to leave A as is. The principal amount invested is $7,000. We leave the 1 inside parentheses. We substitute 0 0.0175 for I. And the value for N is 76. Now we can simplify that right side according to the order of operations to find the amount. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember the order of operations says that we first need to simplify what's in parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite everything else doing this one step at a time. 1 plus 0 0.0175 is equal to 1.0175. That's being raised to the 76th power. The next thing that we do according to the order of operations is that exponent. So when I put this into my calculator, I'm going to rewrite everything else here real quick. When I put 1.0175 to the 76th power in my calculator, I get the decimal 3.737798. Again, I don't want to round until the very end so that I get the most accurate dollar amount possible. The final step is to multiply 7,000 times that really long decimal, and that gives me my future amount of $26,164, and rounding to the nearest cent gives me 58 cents. So, going back to the original problem, when Joe and Paula deposit $7,000 into that college education account, education account under these terms, when their baby uh, goes to college, it will, that money will have grown to $26,164.58.